Today's lesson is on the drill press. Drill press is good for a bunch of things. It has a lot of uses. Sometimes it's easy and quick to just grab a cordless drill and drill a hole. But a drill press is good when you need to have a hole drilled at a very precise angle or a very exact depth, or you have a series of holes to drill in a row. Um, location is important. So drill press has its uses. Also, it's got a much larger motor than a cordless drill will have. So if you have to drill large holes, it's good for those kinds of things as well. Um, because of that large motor, um, we, let's talk about safety a little bit. Um, you would think a drill press is a pretty safe machine, and it relatively is safe, but just like any machine, there are some safety concerns, and you can get hurt pretty bad with a drill press, believe it or not. It's a pretty quiet running machine, so it doesn't sound scary, but some things you want to be careful of, and if you're looking at the handout that I provided, there are some safety rules that we're going to look at here. And there are some standard safety rules that you would consider for any machine, like making sure you fully understand how to use the machine. If you don't get proper instruction from somebody who knows, like if you're in my class, you would ask me. Um, I would rather you ask me than asking a fellow classmate. The purpose of me being here is to instruct you on this. Um, doing repairs on any machine, you would always um, unplug the machine, obviously. Um, and. Um, just have good general knowledge. Safety glasses are important. And on this machine, especially loose clothing is very dangerous. Um, it's a very powerful machine. You would not stop this machine if your clothing got caught. It would tear it off of you, um, probably breaking bones in the process. So if you had a, sh a loose shirt sleeve or something and it got caught in that spitting chuck, it's going to pull your arm in and break your arm probably in multiple places. And, and it won't turn off until somebody hears you screaming and comes in and turns it off for you. So. Some things to be careful of with a drill press. Um, definitely you would not be wearing gloves with a drill press again because that could catch and pull your hand in. So those are some basic things true on most machines. But let's take a look at some things specific to this. Um, eye protection, I should have mentioned as well. Obviously we're wearing eye protection. Um, the guards should be in place. Now you say, where are the guards on a drill press? Well, this top portion is a guard. Inside of here, this is open on top, there are belts and pulleys in there. Don't lay tools and things up here or stick your hands down here when the machine is running because they're going to get wrapped up in the, the belts and the pulleys in there. Um, so don't lay anything on top of the drill press because it could fall inside. Um, certain times you want to clamp down your work. Um, if the piece of wood is big enough, to hold on to and you're not put, drilling a very large hole, you can just hold it with your hands, especially if precise location is not super important. Um, but you would want to clamp your work to the drill press table if accuracy was extremely important, all right, where you wanted to make sure that hole was at perfect location. Um, if the piece of wood was really small and you would have trouble holding it, um, take a pair of parallel clamps or something like that and, and hold on to it that way and clamp that and it gives you something bigger to hold on to or you could clamp the clamp to the table. Um, if you had a very large drill that you were going to, you know, a large hole you were going to drill, so this, that's a fairly large hole, as that comes into the wood, it's much more likely to grab and spin the wood out of your hands than, let's say, a small drill bit would. So large holes, you should be clamping the wood down, all right? Um, and also if you're drilling at an angle. If you're drilling in from an angle, the wood is going to want to slip away because it's only hitting the very edge of the bit, so the wood would need to be clamped. So the times you would clamp down your wood is on a short or small piece of wood, drilling a large hole, and accuracy, which includes drilling in at an angle or precise location. All right, so those are the times you would want to clamp down your work. Um, Drill presses usually have a speed mechanism. Now these drill presses have a variable speed on them. That's what this knob at the top does. And you can make the, the, the chuck spin faster or slower. The larger the hole, the slower you want to go. So if it's taking out more wood, it's going to need more power. Think of riding a mountain bike. When you go up a hill, you sh downshift to a lower speed. So if, even though you're pedaling at a constant speed, you're going slower. So slower gives you more power. All right? When you change the speed to a higher speed, you have less power, but you have more speed. So you give up speed for power. So if you're drilling a small hole, you can go at a fairly high speed, but larger holes, you want to go to a slower speed so you get that power that you need to drill that larger hole. Um, 
and there's a range. Now, this drill press, like I said, is a variable speed drill press. This should be adjusted with it running only, okay, because there's a, a uh, variable pulley in there, and that has to get larger and smaller while the machine's running so that the belt can adjust. If, if you try to change that with the machine off, it's like changing your gears on your mountain bike when you're not pedaling and you're going to cause problems, chain's going to come off, or the belt's going to come off, or break something. Um, you may also have um, a drill press with step pulleys. Now, I have one at home that looks very similar to this, but there's no knob on the front, and this opens. You loosen a little knob in the front, and it opens up, and you see this stack of pulleys up at the front, and another one at the back attached to the motor. And what you do is you whip it off, of course, take the belt off, position it to a different set of pulleys and you get a faster or slower speed. So that's a manual setup and you have to do that obviously with it off and probably unplugged to be safe because your, hand, your hands in the pulleys. Um, you want to change the speed and then once you get the speed changed and you retighten the belt and you close the lid and then you turn it on and you're at a different speed. But you can't change speeds with it running. This is obviously a lot nicer. All you do is turn it on and adjust it. We'll do that in a minute. Um, very easy. But again, slower speeds for larger holes or when you need more power. Let's see, what else do we have here? Um, chuck key. Now, the chuck, and let's talk about some parts on here before we go too far. The chuck is this portion of the drill press right here that the drill bit fits in, okay? And there's all different size and types of drill bits you could put in there, um, but somehow it has to be fastened in there. Now, on cordless drills, they have a, a method of tightening the chuck where you just kind of hold on to the outside of the chuck and it automatically tightens. On drill presses you have a chuck that looks a lot like this. So I have a, a loose chuck here that you can see a little bit easier. All right, And it's got three jaws on the bottom. It's got this gear mechanism on the outside and these holes. Okay, And there's a device called the chuck key. Now years ago, this is all there was, every drill had one of these. And the, the trick was don't lose the chuck key. But the chuck key fits in one of these three little holes and the, the gear teeth engage the, the gear ring on the outside of the chuck and as you turn this you can see the jaws will get bigger or smaller. I don't know if you can see that happening. There it's getting smaller and you'd have the drill bit in the middle and you tighten it down to hold the drill bit. Okay. Now one thing you gotta watch is with small drill bits of course you want the, the bit, let me open this up a little here, you want the bit to fit right in the middle, like this, and you snug it down just like that. So that's how you want that normally to sit. But on smaller bits, sometimes this, even smaller than the one I've got here, they can get sideways in here. And I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit so you can see it, what I'm talking about. See how it's off center? It's only being grabbed by two of the jaws, and it's not perfectly straight up and down. It's a little crooked in there. See it? So sometimes that happens with a little one. So you've got to be careful when you put it in there. What I like to do is put it in and turn it on and turn it on and off once and you can see if it's spinning wacky it means you, you, you're only grabbing it by two jaws. So loosen it and readjust it. All right? But if it's spinning nice and true and straight you know you're in good shape. Now one thing you never want to do and again this would be in the drill press of course. After you get your in here or you're, you're going to get another drill bit or something do not leave the chuck key in the chuck because if you were to start it without looking this chuck key is going to go flying in some unknown direction and it's pretty heavy if this thing whacks you in the face you're going to know about it and you're going to get badly hurt um, so never 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 leave a chuck key in a chuck on a drill press or a lathe or any other thing that's a good general rule of thumb but when you get in the habit that when you tighten it up take it out we keep ours hanging on a chain all the time. So as soon as you're done with it, you just let go of it and it's going to be with the drill press. You won't lose it, right? But never leave it in the chuck. Some chuck keys have a little button on it that's spring-loaded that doesn't let you leave it. It always pops it out. So anyway, that's another safety thing you want to be thinking about. Never leave the chuck key in the chuck. All right, so let's go back to the, the front side of the handout again. And let's first of all, let's talk about some parts before we get too far into this. We already talked about a few. We talked about the chuck. The chuck is what holds the bit in place and you want to know what the capacity is of your truck chuck. Well, in other words, what's the biggest size shank it can take? So drill bits come with a different, and here's a drill bit. Sometimes they have a reduced shank because some chucks aren't real big. But you want to, I always has a half inch chuck, which is the largest that you would typically have on any kind of a 
drill press or drill. So a half inch chuck, usually most drills do not have a shank larger than a half inch. Um, specialty um, bits, and especially in the commercial setting, you might have something bigger. But typically half inch is the largest. Some drill presses will have a 3 8 maximum capacity. That's probably because the drill press has a smaller motor and doesn't want to take larger bits. All right, But just you should know what your capacity is for your drill press. Ours has got a half inch chuck, which means it can get grab a shank is up to a half inch. The, the jaws on it adjust so it can grab smaller sizes without a problem. All right, that's the chuck. Let's go down the list here. The head of the drill press is the whole top portion. If you look at this thing, it looks like some kind of an alien. This would be the head, right? So this is the head of the drill press, okay? The column is this metal bar that goes from here all the way down to the floor. And if you have a bench top drill press, it would go to the bench top, of course. But it holds the head up and the table attaches it to as, as well as the base, which are the next parts on here. The table is the thing you put the, your piece of wood on to drill a hole into. The table usually has a hole in it, so the drill bit, if it goes through your piece of wood, it has a place to go. Not a good idea to try to drill through that hole all the time, because sometimes the table can be positioned so that the hole is not under the bit, by the way. So don't always assume that hole is right under the bit. But this is the table. It's heavy. This should probably be in one of the safety rules, but don't drop the table on your knee, right? To loosen the table, see if I could do this without blocking the camera, there is a handle back here that you're going to loosen, but hang on to the table when you loosen it because it's very heavy. It's cast iron, right? So loosen that handle, and now the table can go down, right? But when you go to lift it up, it won't come up because what you're doing is you're tilting the table. So what you got to do is you got to grab the back and the front together and lift it together so that it goes up like that, and then tighten it back up, but never just loosen it because it's going to come slipping down and take your kneecap off. So be careful about that. The table does also tilt left to right. There's a pin underneath. You could pull the pin out. So here's the pin. All right. Little pin underneath that fits in a hole. And you can take and turn the table vertical or any angle in between. And there's a nut underneath there that you can secure it at that particular angle um, as well. You know, 90% of the time you drill in a hole perpendicular to the chuck, so it's, we leave it in the horizontal position and that pin holds it there as well and keeps it properly aligned. Um, the, below, and aside from the table, we have the base, which is where the other end of the column goes into, and it's just a big metal platform that the, holds the drill press up. Drill presses are top heavy, so if you have a drill press, it's especially a floor model, when you want to have it bolted to the floor so it doesn't tip over on you because the top, the head of it, is pretty heavy and it gets off center a little bit, it's going to come over and, and land on you. Even if you have a bench top one, it's good to have it bolted to the bench top through the base. All right. Um, the chuck we talked about, the hand lever. Hand lever is what makes the chuck go up and down. Right, and as you spin the hand lever around, you can see the chuck right here going down. The part that's inside the drill press that you start to see is called the quill. All right, and um, the throw or the travel of the drill press, like it, um, if you're looking at the specifications, tells you how much it will go up and down. Okay, it's called the stroke. Ours has a, a six-inch stroke. Excuse me. Um, this is a quill locking lever. So let's say for se I was making an adjustment, I have a bit in there, and I want it to hold the, the chuck in this downward position for a minute, I can take and tighten up this lever here, and it will hold the quill or the chuck in that downward position. It clamps onto the quill and holds the chuck down wherever I left it. And I can even run it in that position, right? So um, that's called the quill locking lever. The power button you saw me operate just now is right in the front, okay? Um, on the side, we have what's called a depth gauge and locking nut. Now, different drill presses may have slightly different setups. On ours, it's a two-piece thing here. It's got a little piece on top. This, this threaded rod that's up and down is the, you know, the, the depth gauge. And the, the nut will spin up and down, right? So what you do is you lift this top piece up, spin it to where you need it, and then you drop this other piece on it, and it locks it in position so it can't turn. And it controls how far down it will go. What I usually do is I'll put a bit in there, we'll do it in a minute. I put a bit in first, bring it down to where I want it, tighten the quill locking lever, and then, whoops, and then, this doesn't want to, there we go. 
then bring the locking nut down to land on the little platform and now that's my final depth right there. So that's what that does. It's depth gauge and locking nut. Some of them have two nuts that tighten up against each other so they don't move. Um, but they have some kind of a, a system like that in here for, for doing that. I like to keep it up out of the way for setup purposes. All right, let's see what else we got here. Power button, we talked about, quill locking lever we talked about, and the speed control. Now the way the speed control works, on our drill press, which is, it's variable, turn this on, and then you, turn, you adjust it with it running. All right, so that's about the slowest right there. That's gonna give me lots of power, but not a lot of speed. And that's full speed, less power, okay? Okay, so drill press. Now, this at the highest speed is still only at 4,700 RPMs. A router, as comparison, is at 37,000 RPMs. This is almost 5,000 at the fastest speed. So you can't really put a router bit in a drill press and use it like a router table um, because this just doesn't spin anywhere near fast enough to properly cut with a router bit. Um, in case you might have thought of that. But in any case, fast speed, slow speed, slower, better for larger holes because it has more power. All right, so let's talk about drilling a hole. So first of all, when you drill a hole, if you're gonna drill all the way through, you don't wanna drill through this hole in the table because A, if the table's not perfectly lined up, you'll drill into the table. But if you did have it lined up, as it comes through, there's no support underneath the board. So what's gonna happen, it's gonna bust out and you're gonna have a very unclean finish on the piece of wood. So I usually keep a piece of plywood, you know, with a nice surface at my drill press so that I can drill through my piece of wood into the piece of scrap plywood underneath if I'm drilling all the way through. So let's say I'm gonna drill a hole and we'll take this drill bit that we were using here a minute ago. Take this drill and we're gonna put it into our chuck and I can adjust this outer ring by hand for a major adjustment. And then once I get it close to where I want it, I'm gonna grab the, the chuck key, tighten it up all the way, take the chuck key out. And now I have my drill bit in place. And let's say I wanna drill into this hole. Now usually you have a mark on your piece of wood, usually in the form of an X as to where you wanna have your hole to go, all right? Typically, you don't draw a circle. You usually draw an X because it's the point of the drill bit that you want to have in there. So I'm going to put this here, and I'm going to drill all the way through. So let's set up my depth stop anyway, because I, I could do this without setting up the depth stop. I could feel when it punches through, but let's just set it up anyway. So here's my, my final depth, and now I'm into my, my piece of scrap underneath. I'm going to tighten the quill locking lever. I'm going to bring down my locking nut here depth gauge and if I bring it right down to the platform it's going to end right there which is just barely coming through so I'm going to have it set just a little bit off of that platform so it will go just a little deeper okay and I'm going to make sure I've got a, a clean spot on my piece of wood underneath and I'm going to loosen this up and let that come back up and this is a reasonably small piece of wood a small drill bit rather sorry um, with a good sized piece of wood so I can hold it by hand. Now one thing I should have mentioned before and I can mention it now is if you have a length of wood sticking off you would think well do I want to have that large long length off to the left or off to the right? Often it doesn't matter but if there's any chance that this catches the drill turns in this direction so this is going to come swing around and hit me. If, if I keep it to the left and it catches it's going to swing around and hit the column and stop. So it's always good to have the long side of the board, if you have a choice, off to the left. Just an extra step of safety for that. So now I've got my depth set, I've got my bit in here, I've got my piece of wood marked, and I'm going to hold it just because the accuracy isn't real important, let's say, on this. Start it up, and this is a fairly small bit, so the speed that I've got it at is, is plenty fine, nice and fast. So I'm going to bring this down, adjust it where I want it, and then drill right through until my, my depth stop is hit and let that come back up. Turn it off. And I have a nice clean hole from the top. And you can see because I had it on a scrap board, the, the hole on the bottom 
the where it came out the bottom is nice and clean. All right. Now let's say, for example, I wanted to drill part of the way through. So let's say I don't want it to come out the other side. So let's say, for example, see if I can show it on the camera here. I want to drill through to like maybe that point. I'm going to come through and stop at that line. So what I'm going to do with the drill press off ahead of time. Now I don't have to have a scrap board underneath if I don't want to um, because I'm not going to come all the way through. I'll leave it there anyway though. Um, I'm going to bring the drill bit down to the depth that I want and then tighten the quill locking lever so it stops at the right spot. Right about there. Okay. Once that's set, I'm going to readjust my depth stop so it lands on that. So now, once I loosen the locking lever, you can see that that won't go through. So the easiest way to do it is draw, up, draw a line on the side of your board, set your drill bit to that depth, set the locking lever, and now when I drill a hole, it will only go to that point and will not go through. Whoop, where do you go? All right, you can see it did not come out the other side. All right, it was just on that one little spot. So that's how you drill part of the way through. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else do I want to show you here? Oh, let's say I want to drill a bunch of holes in a row. Like, let's say I get, this is the side of a cabinet, and I'm going to have shelf brackets here, and I want to drill holes for shelf brackets. I want them in a nice straight line. I could draw a line with a ruler and by eye line up every last one of them, but. A little trick is I could take a scrap board that I have already set up here and attach a little fence to it. Now this one you can tell has been well used, but you'll notice I have a fence set up on it. Okay, And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my board up against that fence and I could slide it back and forth to drill my holes Okay, and keep them in line. So what I do is I put this here, get a couple of clamps, first of all I'm going to, let's say I We'll simulate what we want to do here. So let's say I want to have a bunch of holes along that line. Let's say I've taken my ruler and made some accurate cuts, make believe it's accurate. I just obviously did that. But let's say I want those holes in that line. So what I'm going to do is lay that board on here and up, keep it up against my fence. And it may be hard to see with the, um, my camera on a tripod here. I'm going to readjust it a little bit so that you can see a little better here. Bear with me. This is low tech, you know. What can I tell you? There we go. That's a little better. So now I'm going to position my drill bit to go into one of those holes right where I want it. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll use the, the drill bit as a clamp and I'll tighten the locking lever. I just tighten the locking lever so it stays in place. And I'm going to throw a clamp on either side in the back here out of the way to hold a table. The, um, sorry, the, uh, my scrap board with the fence on it in place onto the table. And then I can loosen my quill locking lever and this will come back up again and I'm ready to go. Now let's say that I didn't want to go all the way through and I, what I would have done is set the depth, which I'll leave it set from before. Um, so it won't come all the way through. And then the only thing I have to worry about is my left and right adjustment. I don't have to worry about the front to back, which will put all of my holes in a perfect line. So here's one. And I can do this all day long and have every hole line up perfect. So you can see all these holes. Oop, where are you? All right, in a nice straight line, evenly spaced apart. Okay, and they didn't come through because I had the depth stop, you know, set up so that didn't happen. So that's another way to use the drill press so that um, that can happen. Now let me put myself back in the picture here. There we go. Do do do. Good. All right. So taking a look at the handout, making sure we don't miss anything here. Um, there are some setup directions about putting in the drill press, adjusting the table, being careful to not drop it. Always put the um, Drill into scrap if you're drilling all the way through. Adjust the depth stop if necessary, which we did. Um, make sure the machine is running when you adjust the speed if you have a variable speed drill press like we do. Um, again, clamping down small work or when you're drilling a large hole or if you're really accuracy is important. And, and again, using a fence like this is going to be an aid in accuracy. 
Now, one other thing to think about, let's say I was drilling a long, deep hole. Let's say I wanted to drill a hole into a board this way and I wanted to go way down deep. What's gonna happen is, as you're drilling the hole, the chips aren't gonna clear. Okay, so if, you know, a short hole like we were just doing, that's not very deep, so it, the drill bit can eject the chips. But it's, the smaller the bit and the longer it is, the harder it is for to get those chips out. What happens, they get packed in there and then the bit can't cut properly and it overheats and burns your bit and ruins your bit. So with long, deep holes, you wanna go down a little bit and when you notice the chips aren't coming out, raise it back up, clear the chips, go down a little further, raise it up, clear the chips, go a little further until you get to the depth that you need. And they do sell extra long bits too for long, deep holes. So you might have to do that. But never try to do it all in one continuous motion. You got a lot of power in this hand lever, um, so you can force it in there, but you're going to be damaging your bit and causing all kinds of problems. So make sure you're clearing the chips as you go through. All right. And that's about it. So the drill press is your friend. There's lots of cool things. Lots of times, again, it's quick and easy to, to drill a hole with a, a cordless drill, but when you need something where the, the hole is perfectly perpendicular or at a very particular other angle, um, you need to go through and not come out the other side, or you're drilling a very large hole, um, the drill press is the way to go. One other time too, I think worth mentioning, these kinds of bits that you see here, this is called a Forstner bit, you'll notice it's, it's large, this isn't even the largest size, but it has a very short um, point in the middle. And if you're drilling it with a cordless drill, you have to be really careful to hold it perfectly flat, because if you angle it slightly, the, the side's going to catch and it's going to go skidding across the wood. I like to drill holes with these in a drill press whenever I can because of that chance that if I go a little bit crooked, it could go skidding across my project and ruin things. So fortunate bits are good to use in a drill press. You can do them with a cordless drill. Um, realize too they're, they're uh, wrist breakers because it's drilling a large hole and when it hit, contacts the wood, it's pulling a lot of wood out of there. So you want to have a slow speed on your, on your cordless drill and really have a good hold of it. But um, it can grab the drill and, and swing it. Um, and I've even seen situations where people have gotten a broken nose drilling holes with something large like this with a cordless drill because when it catches, and they got, they're drilling a hole up near their face and then the handle of the drill comes around and whacks them in the face and breaks their nose. Funny injury, but you will be surprised how often that happens. But in any case, drill press is a way to go for drilling with large bits like this or you have specific situations where you need holes in a straight line or a particular depth. So the drill press is the way to go. Hope you got some good information out of that. Look over the handout before you take the test if you're in my class. And we'll see you next time.